Hey everybody, final thoughts time for In the Name of Odin. And I'll just come right out and say it, you know, there's been a huge explosion of Viking themed games over the last year and it's going to continue into this year. You can expect to see quite a few. So this is a very jam-packed genre at the moment, uh, which is kind of interesting and surprising. And I've played a bunch of them and of all of the ones I've played so far, I would just say this one is probably my favorite because this is the Viking game you can play if you're not looking to try and stab other players in the back. If you are trying to look for, you know, a fun, light to medium, kind of a gateway plus Euro game, which is more about you just trying to do the best you can and racing everybody else to get the best spoils instead of constantly stealing from each other and backstabbing and engaging in all sorts of just antisocial behavior, which pretty much every other Viking game out there does, this might be the game for you, just like it is the game for me and Jen. I really, really appreciate that. And the game itself works really, really nicely. I mentioned this right up front, but really, while I was playing it, it reminded me a lot of Dominion. Not, I mean, it's, it's not a deck builder, don't get me wrong. I mean, you're, you're not building up a deck and then hoping to get the right combo of cards, but it's like a deck builder where the deck started out already built. And so you're just in that point where, okay, I've got a big deck, it's got a lot of stuff in it, and every turn I'm just trying to draw cards and figure out what's the best combination every turn of the cards I've got, including being able to swap some out with ones that are in the supply and um, you know, saving cards from one round to the next to be able to build up for the turn you really need to do. All the cards have multiple uses. And uh, probably the most satisfying thing about the game is, I mean, because you are constantly cycling through your heroes. I mean, they, you, you recruit them um, and you know, they die at the drop of a hat you know, when you use their special powers or whenever they go on a raid. So you're constantly getting an influx of new special powers, which again, kind of almost feels kind of... A deck buildery in the same way a deck builder. You're constantly, oh, on this round, I've got this cool thing that I don't normally have. Again, it's not a deck builder. I don't mean to be misleading, but it just kind of has that same feel, even though it's a very, very different overall structured experience. But between, so you're constantly getting this new influx of special powers. The ships, every single ship in this game has a different combinations of powers as well. And it's very, very interesting. If you get a shipyard very early on, you could go for a strategy of um, you know, having two ships on the go. One, um, you know, and cycling back and forth between them, depending on what type of raid you want to go on. Or, um, if if you don't, it's an interesting thing because you can decide early on, okay, I'm going to grab this ship because it's really good for the raid right now. And then once it's done and it's 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 out of port and it's damaged, you've got to decide how much resources are you going to spend on that ship. You're going to have to bring it back so you can do another raid, but do you repair it or do you send it out hobbled so that after its next raid it gets destroyed? You might want to do that because in the meantime, an even cooler ship has come out that's going to help you with something else you need. So you could just try to, because, you know, repairing, uh, you, you once a ship is gone out. You have to spend two seamanship to bring it back and then two more to repair it. Um, but if you only spend two and then let it get blown up on its next raid, you could then spend three instead of two to get an entirely new ship. And maybe that makes more sense because you can grab a ship that's worth more points. And the powers you get from these buildings, every time you play, you're going to get a different combination. Normally in a game, you're going to get maybe two, maybe three buildings built because it's, it's it requires a lot of resources, a lot of focus to be able to get five buildings built. But if you ever find yourself in a situation where, oh my god, these cards fell in my hand, I have to, I have to take advantage of it, that's really cool. But it's always a tough choice deciding which card hard to get because it will they're all incredibly powerful they will all radically change what your overall strategy how are you going to focus on ships are you going to focus on fast short raids are you going to focus on building there's build there's buildings that will make it easier for you to build other buildings there's um enough interesting elements that get randomly seeded into every game because it's going to be a different combination of ships a different combination of buildings and a different combination of Vikings and a different combination of raids that, um, and more importantly, a different hand of cards every single time. So you're constant. And the beautiful thing too is this game is so fast. It, you know, it's structure again, like a deck builder, like a dominion style thing is really, um, kind of streamlined for fast, fun, sprightly, play because when it's not your turn you could be spending you can be really figuring out exactly what you're going to do so when your turn comes around boom you just get it going and i mean this is easily an under an hour game
It's really got a lot going for it. And um, the artists, you know, almost everything you saw today was not final art, but the final art I have seen all looks really, really nice. Very cool, very evocative. The little Viking minis that are going to replace these little meeples, uh, they look really good. And, um, you know, and again, hopefully the developer, you know, NSKN Games, they have mentioned to me that they are aware that red, green, and blue is a problem. So they're looking at that. So fingers crossed that get fixed as well. And it's, it was a very enjoyable game. And like I said, for Jens and my taste, we played several Viking games over the last six months or so. And I expect we'll play quite a few more in this year. But so far, this has been the top banana because it's, it's all about, you know, Euro style, hand management, card optimization. It's not about stabbing each other in the back. And that makes it just about perfect for us. And that, folks, is in the name of Odin. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, as always, let me know. Uh, sorry for any goofs I made. I got, probably got a little carried away here and there, but hopefully you have a pretty good idea of what the game feels like to play. And if you want to know more, you can check out the Kickstarter link. It's that I right up there in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes. But otherwise, I'm going to wish you a very, very happy day. Talk to you everybody. So long. Uh, bye bye